What stands out as most meaningful to me has been watching God work using me and my ministry at the intersection of gender and race. I am the first African-American female to be ordained in the North Texas Conference. Everywhere I went, they had never seen such before. <laughs> Sometimes people stumbled over what to call me because they had never in their minds put together a woman and the word pastor. But God showed up and showed out at every church I went, and I watched grown women and grown men work their way through sexism in their minds and come around. I got a phone call, and a church member had been allowed to, to see his wife uh, for he had admitted to, to, to the hospital uh, with, with COVID. And it was very sad because she was failing rather rapidly. And um, he got a phone call from the hospital and he says, you can come to the emergency room and um, you can have 30 minutes. So he called me and I lived quite a ways away, but I jumped in my car and it was an awful stormy night. And we got together and um, he drove into the storm in the hospital parking lot in Denton. They would not let me in with him. And I waited there, and it was like maybe midnight, one o'clock, I don't know. But he and I had a time to talk. And he came out of the hospital, and she had passed. And um, we just hugged thing for me is that it's, the, it's that congregation, it's that, it's that connection and doing what we can to just be involved and to help them whenever and wherever we can. Two things that stand out for me, uh, we were able at First Methodist Dallas to start the Crossroads Community Services that became the largest distributor of food for the North Dallas Food Bank. So we're very proud of that. It's now a standalone nonprofit, but we started it as the mission arm of that church. And then at Highland Park, we started the Mark Craig Leadership Network, and we've been able to recruit, train, and graduate 36 interns and send them into the church. And so uh, that's been a real privilege to be involved with that and to mentor those interns who remind me of why I got into ministry in the first place. I want to encourage United Methodist Christians to start working on their own souls and come to a place where they experience and we experience a kind of grace that extends out into the community and creates partnerships. That kind of way of being, to me, enlivens and brings healing, uh, it brings hope and joy, and it brings purpose. And I think about places like Project Transformation that came together because we saw a need in the community and we reached out in grace and partnered. Or places like Cafe Momentum that do such important work with young people who are coming out of the correctional facilities. And that all comes when we do our own spiritual work of looking at what the needs are in community and knowing that God you know, will lead us out into the community to meet those needs. I would encourage churches to create new engagement by number one, keeping their hands on the pulse of what is happening now. Please discard all those manuals from the 1950s. Hello, we, <laughs> people are demanding fresh, relevant ministries. People are hurting, they need family, they need help, and the last thing they need is a stale ministry. So I'm saying be brave, be bold, think outside the box, and do not be afraid to fail. 
do not be afraid to fail because some of the best lessons you will learn are in the valley of failure. Pick yourself up and try, try again. It may sound trite, it did when I was a young pastor, but I would say bloom where you are planted. Uh, after serving seven churches uh, and 43 years in ministry, I would say that sounds like a very wise thing to me. Uh, in areas of salvation, we focus on where we're going. In areas of ministry, we should focus on where we are. Nourish your soul. Continue to study and take care of yourself. Um, be somebody that reaches out and connects to people where you can get support from faith friends and not be alone. And, and lastly, know God is always with you, that you're never alone. Um, God stands strongly um, with your in your calling and in your connection to the people of the church. And so allow yourself to continue to be led by God and God's Holy Spirit so that you'll uh, have the strength throughout your whole ministry to be with the people of God. Hire a great pianist or an organist, because music, yeah. Get the sermon completed earlier in the week. Don't wait till Friday, Saturday. Take a weekend off every so often. You deserve it. Get a mentor. You're going to need some encouragement and support along the way. And I will tell you that uh, my mentor is Jack Gibson from uh, Custer Road. Shout out to you, Jack. Um, thank you so much for what you've done for me. Uh, try to call a few con uh, congregants uh, each week just to say hello. No agenda, not asking them to do anything, but to just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I mean, a lot of you persons are gonna be doing that. But I'll tell you, it's, I think it's about having some fun as well. Change it up just a little bit and make it fun as well as it should be. God loves that.